Currently, there are 114 auto brands in China. According to data from the China Passenger Car Association, the top 15 brands account for 70% of the country's total auto sales, with the remaining 99 brands dividing up the remaining 30% of the market. So how does the quality of Chinese auto brands stack up? In this episode, we'll examine the brand Hongqi, or Red Flag in English, followed by information about BYD. The name Hongqi, or Red Flag, refers to its red bloodline. Founded in 1958, it's a household name in China. It's made directly by China First Automobile Works, one of China's oldest and largest automotive manufacturers. Since 2013, to fulfill the government's goal of supporting domestic brands, Chinese heads of state and Chinese embassies abroad have been using Hongqi as official vehicles. Hongqi was once the exclusive vehicle of high-ranking Communist Party officials at the provincial and ministerial levels and above. The official media have touted the recently launched Hongqi H9 as the benchmark for domestic luxury cars. But this so-called domestic Cadillac sedan has been criticized by Chinese auto enthusiasts as practically industrial junk. For example, a car owner from Hebei province bought a Hongqi sedan. It broke down a dozen times in one year. On September 13, 2023, the owner got so upset that he drove the car to the dealership and smashed it on the spot. This car has broken down 13 times and had parts replaced 10 times, but it still doesn't work. We are scared of driving it. If I don't smash it, what's the use of it? Bring me the key. I'll drive it out of here and move it out of the way. I suggest you talk to your husband because he's given our dealership a bad name. The bad influence isn't caused by us. You know how many times the car has been repaired, right? I drove it back to Sichuan that day, just after you finished repairing it. In 10 hours, the car broke down again. We were in the middle of the road and the GPS broke down too. We were terrified. We have replaced this GPS three times and it still doesn't work, and the big screen has been repaired three times. The car has only been bought for over a month, but no one bothers to take care of the problem. What kind of solution do you have? It's impossible to have us bear all the losses. We might be able to accept 20,000 or 30,000 yuan, but you charge more than 100,000 yuan or about 15,000 US dollars. Who can afford that? Our money isn't a windfall. Film all of these. It's a 1.5 year old car. It is broken down three times and had parts replaced ten times. Time and time again, I have to have parts replaced, but it still doesn't work properly. We come to your dealerships for solutions, but you are dismissing us every time. Well, this time you can repair it now. This is the maintenance record. Look how thick it is. Come on. 
You are going to charge me another 100,000 RMB if you were to give me a new car. No need to do that anymore. I will give you the car. I can buy a new car for less than 200,000 yuan, and now I have to pay 100,000 yuan to replace this one I just bought. I have repaired it 13 times and replaced the parts 14 times, and it still doesn't work. Have you talked to your boss about this situation? Did it work? No? Your solution is to make me go to the manufacturer, but I bought the car from the dealership here. This time the Hongqi brand is going viral. The manufacturer is going viral too. I don't want this car anymore. Didn't you say you had no solution? I'll let the public know. Let's see who else dares to buy from you, the Hongqi brand. On January 7, 2023, the Hongqi brand H9 car crashed and became like this. The airbag didn't open at all, you see. The airbag inside didn't open at all. The speed was about 120 kilometers at that time. The back of the car crashed like this. The location was in Dali Mountain, Dongguan, about 4 a.m., a highway accident. This burning vehicle that resembles a Rolls Royce is in fact a Chinese made Hongqi sedan. The owner of the car, who is probably new to this situation where the car combusted on its own, waved a small fire extinguisher around, not knowing what to do. The passenger called the 119 fire hotline. While the operator calmly spoke to the caller, the fire grew bigger and bigger. In the end, the owner and passenger watched their vehicle go up in flames as they waited for help. The following video clip has also been making the rounds on social networks in China. It shows a collision between a Tesla Model 3 and a Hongqi HS5 near a highway. The front cabin of the Hongqi vehicle caught fire. A Chinese netizen commented, It's outrageous, the Tesla vehicle doesn't even smoke, nor deform. At least drop something, have something broken. How do you make those who just quit their Tesla feel? Perhaps because of the noble bloodline of the Hongqi vehicles, its customer service seems very bad. Here is a three-minute video shot at Hongqi's customer service. By the end of it, you may understand why the previous owner was so mad that he smashed his own car. What's wrong with me sitting here? No, who are you to curse me? Did I curse you? You deserve to be yelled at. I just said if you were not a staff member here, why are you sitting at the reception? You deserve to be yelled at. What does it matter to you where I sit? What's it got to do with you if I'm sitting in the sky? Where is this place? I'm looking for a receptionist. I'm asking if this is Hongqi. Is this the Hongqi club? Stay away from me. What's in that room? It says, do not enter if you're not a staff member. Mind your work, ignore them. Ah, is this how Hong Chi provides after-sales service? You aren't part of the after-sales team, but you're sitting and cursing customers? What's going on? What's it got to do with you if I'm not an after-sales person? What's it got to do with you whether I sit here or not? I'm looking for the management and the after-sales staff. What's it got to do with you if I'm sitting here? So what are you here for? It says service receptions. 
So what? I told you I'm not a staff member. You should go to that room for what you're looking for. If there is no one in that room, you just wait. There's no one there now. The show just ended yesterday, and most of the people are on break today. Did I not make myself clear to you? Did you tell me? What responsibility and obligation do I have to tell you that? You're sitting in the receptionist's seat. What does it matter to you where I sit? Why are you angry? Mad dogs. Who is the mad dog anyway? I was kind in telling you whom to go to. What's wrong with that? I went, but they ignored me. You're the one who yelled at me first. Figure it out. Get out of here! What's wrong with cursing you? Why can't I come in? I'm a Hongqi customer. Can't I come in? Who are you to tell me get out? Tell me. I'm whoever I want to be. Who is she? She's not from here. She's not from here. Why is she so arrogant? What kind of place is this? Tell me, what kind of place is this? She is a broker who specializes in providing services to people. If she is not from this company, don't sit here. What's it to you where I sit? What kind of place is this? It's the Hongqi Company. What department of Hongqi? Is it the Hongqi After Sales Department, right? What's the seat she's sitting on for? Put down your cell phone. Put it down. What are you doing? What do you want? I'm hitting you. What are you going to do? Your quality is really. You are of high caliber. What do you want to do to her? She hit me. China's long-standing brands Hongqi and BYD, which was founded in 2003, are both national champions of Chinese automobile production. And have become examples of how the CCP incites the public to love the country and the party, so to speak. Under strong propaganda and policy protection, many Chinese people are actually paying for them. The owner just bought the car four months ago. I bought it on July 24th. On August 25th, the car crashed and became like this. But none of the airbags went off, and the whole car was scrapped. I asked the car company BYD, and they said that you didn't hit the spot. I asked them how many airbags they had there, and they said about six or seven airbags, but none of them went off. Now my question is, why the airbags didn't go off in the accident? Are they only made by the manufacturer as just something to be put on? Many countries protect their national industries, and there is nothing wrong with that. But what the CCP does is to go to the extreme without regulations, and it's highly arbitrary. For example, China has recently imposed more and more restrictions on Tesla vehicles. A Tesla owner was stopped by the police when he was charging his personal vehicle. The police offered no explanation as to why. In an airport in Hunan, a sign in the parking lot reads, "Confidential controlled area, no Tesla allowed." In Wuhan, the Railway Public Security Bureau forbade Tesla parking in the station, and in Hangzhou, Tesla owners were banned from the highway. Tesla. Exit down. It's temporary control. Why? Why can't I get on when they can? Because you're a Tesla. What? You're kidding, right? You're kidding. It's kind of funny, but you have to obey. What kind of rule is this? The Tesla I bought is a new energy vehicle that is licensed and allowed to be on the road. Don't grab my cell phone. Don't touch my cell phone. Don't move your hand. I didn't do anything physical. I followed the official channel and paid taxes and fees. This is the national grid. It's open to the public. Why can't I charge my car here? Please tell me which laws and regulations you are enforcing. If you are enforcing the law, first you have to do it legally. If you don't have any laws and regulations to go by, then I have the right to charge my car here.
，那么我就有权在这里充电。国家电网。The national grid only allows Chinese brand electric vehicles to be charged. We were told Tesla wasn't allowed to be charged because the system wasn't compatible. What are we supposed to do for the rest of over 10 kilometers? We've already been to two service areas and have been met with the same problem. It's the same service provider and it dominates. This is what it said. Tesla has so many customers nationwide, I don't know if you guys have been met with the same problem. For Chinese officials, the banning of Tesla vehicles from the parking lot may be due to airport security and confidentiality concerns. But it is also due to the fact that Tesla's high-tech technology has already threatened the CCP's own espionage system. It's probably why Tesla vehicles are targeted. China's current anti-espionage campaign is aimed at Tesla and Apple. It's expected that China will further expand its crackdown on foreign investment. Regarding the banning of Tesla, some netizens have questioned. Tesla is an authorized car for sale in China. Who gave the airport the authority to ban it? A civilian airport has to do this. It's really funny. No one cares when I use my camera to snap pictures, but they are scared of a car. Many cars can make recordings. Banning Tesla can ensure confidentiality. The right of interpretation lies with the National Security Bureau. Some netizens pointed out, let Tesla come in first to boost the automobile industry chain, then build up the domestic automakers, exchange the technology for the market, and then use this kind of reason to kick Tesla out. They have done the same with cell phones. They kicked out Samsung. They haven't pushed out Apple yet. It's the same old trick. It reminds me of the days of class struggle when class enemies were everywhere. But once they implemented the reform in opening up policy, class enemies vanish naturally. Anyway, just come up with an excuse and kick them out. For the CCP, cheating or pressuring domestic consumers is hardly something to worry about. It's unlikely to lose its market due to quality or service problems. But the international market is what's giving them the most headaches. In recent years, the CCP has been supporting the electric vehicle industry through state subsidies, making Chinese EVs quickly capture the European market. In response, the President of the European Commission announced on September 13th that she wouldn't accept the Chinese Communist Party's market distorting behavior and would launch a counter-subsidy investigation into Chinese electric vehicles. So I can announce today that the Commission is launching an anti-subsidy investigation into electric vehicles coming from China. But global markets are now flooded with cheaper Chinese electric cars. And their price is kept artificially low by huge state subsidies. This is distorting our market. She told all members of the European Parliament that Chinese state subsidies had hurt Europe's solar panel industry, and now the electric vehicle industry was facing the same threat. The EU will do whatever it takes to protect European companies from unfair competition. In the first half of 2023, China exported nearly 350,000 EVs to nine European countries, more than it did in the whole year of 2022. A forecast shows that by 2030, the share of Chinese automakers in the global electric vehicle market will rise from 17% to 33%. European companies will suffer great losses. At a recent Munich auto show, the number of Chinese exhibitors was as high as 40%, which accounted for half of the exhibitors, reflecting the fact that Chinese EVs are encroaching on the European market with their low prices. Europe has a 10% tariff on cars imported from China. By comparison, the US tariff on Chinese imports is 27.5%. Chinese manufacturers have taken advantage of the gap to expand rapidly in the European market. According to Jato Dynamics, a British automotive consultancy, at least 11 new Chinese brands will enter the European market by 2025, and the average price of a Chinese EV in the first half of 2022 was less than £32,000, significantly lower than the European average of £56,000.
This news is disturbing for Western automotive counterparts. On September 13, 2023, the Minister of Finance and Economy of France and the Minister of Economy of Germany held a joint press conference in Berlin and said that they welcomed the EU's investigation into China's subsidies for electric vehicles. I welcome the probe launched by the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen on subsidies for Chinese companies in China. If those subsidies do not conform with the rules of the World Trade Organization, Europe must act. Sure, we need to simplify our rules in order to stay competitive, but we must also defend our interests and Europe must show that we are determined to defend our economic and industrial interests. So, from that point of view, this probe is a very good decision, which I welcome.